So now you're moving on to informative speeches. And what I wanted to do briefly today was just give you some highlights about the informative speech. There are a few things that I wanted you to know. So the first thing I wanted you to know includes um, how the speech is similar and different compared to the three speech. So some of the similarities include structure. You're going to have the same structure as in the three speech with an introduction, body and conclusion, okay? In the introduction, very similar format. You're going to have to have an attention getter. And previously, you're required to use a quotation. Now you get to choose what type of rhetorical strategy you want to use. Instead of starting with a quotation, you can like tell a short story, you can refer to a historical or pop culture event, you can start with a startling statement or statistic, you can even maybe tell a story or refer to like a movie or a TV show or a book. As long as it ties in and sets the foundation for your speech. Another similarity you're going to have in the introduction is you're going to have a thesis statement, right? And you are going to have your preview. And remember the preview is like a roadmap of your three main points. Two things that you're going to add to the introduction includes a credibility statement. You're going to add a credibility statement to your introduction. And you're going to have to add an audience analysis, right? What I mean by that is in the credibility statement, you are going to have to tell the audience why you are talking about the speech. What's your expertise? What is your interest? What have you done to prepare? Okay, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in the topic, but you have to kind of show us that this is a topic you're interested in. Maybe tell us a little bit why that's related to your rhetorical strategy and that you've done research for it and you want to present that information to them. The second new component in the introduction is going to be like an audience statement um, where you tell the audience why they should listen to you. And this is critical. It only has to be one or two sentences, maybe even one thought, but you need to tell the audience why they should listen to you, what's in it for them. You're gonna to have to relate this topic to them in some way, okay? Then the rest of the introduction is very similar to the three speech. So now you're going to have the attention getter. You're going to include perhaps a credibility statement, a statement for the audience, audience leads into your central idea or thesis, and then your preview. Then you will move on to the body of the speech. The body of the speech should have about three main points. How you organize the three main points is going to be dependent on you, right? Um, depends on your interest and your topic. So you're going to have to kind of explore that, but you want three distinct topics with the transition in between. And then in the conclusion, it's going to be very similar to the previous speech where you're going to review the topic, you're going to review the central idea, and you're going to have a closing statement. The closing statement should somehow wrap everything up. So one strategy is to refer back to the same way that you started. So if you started with a quotation, you end with a quotation. You start with a story, you refer back to that story. But that's not the only technique you can use. You can use different strategies to maybe motivate the audience to find out more information. You can change the different type of strategy you use, but Remember to end the speech with impact. Now, let me tell you what your speech is going to be about. Your informative speech is going to 
be about an interesting career or unconventional profession or lifestyle. That's really broad. And so I want you to explore something that you haven't thought about before as a career or something that you've seen and you thought was really interesting, okay? You certainly can pick the profession that you want to go into as a way to do more research for yourself. That's totally appropriate. But think about some unconventional, and when I mean unconventional, I mean just something different than the norm, right, that we hear about every day. So some students have done speeches about cuddlers, which I'll let you look that up for yourself. Some folks have talked about CSI, and then other folks have talked about the people that clean up after, you know, a crime scene, which was really, really fascinating. I've had other people do speeches about people that work at fairs and carnivals, you know, the lifestyle of a rapper or somebody emerging from the rapper. And I don't know, I've heard some other ones and there are some examples for you in the informed speech section. So please review that to get some ideas. There are some other additional requirements that are key for the informative speech that's very different than the three speech. In the three speech, you did not have to like do any research, right? You backed up everything with examples and narratives from your own experience. For this speech, you are required to have four sources and cite four oral sources. You're going to cite them orally, which means you're going to tell us where you got that information. Perhaps it's the date, perhaps it's the author, perhaps it's the article title or the, where the research came from, okay? It's going to depend on what it is. In addition to that, you're going to have to vary your type of supporting materials. There's a section in the lab that helps you with oral citations and supporting materials. Supporting materials is the information that you find in your research. They vary. They could be examples, they can be statistics, they can be expert testimony, lay testimonies, analogies, definitions, quotations. There's a variety of them. And what I want you to do is mix and match the different types of supporting materials that you actually orally cite, okay? In this speech, you can't just tell us your opinions or your thoughts, which you, you can definitely do that, but then you're gonna have to back it up with evidence. And that's what the oral citation is for. You back up your speech with evidence, okay? And you tell us where you got that evidence. It's also critical to remember in social sciences, we cite in APA format. So make sure to use APA format in your outline and your reference entry. Now, another requirement for your speech is visual aids. There are a variety of different types of visual aids you can use, but most folks tend to use PowerPoint, especially in this form and online, PowerPoint is pretty accessible to all. So make sure that you have some type of presentation on A. It can be a PowerPoint, which includes graphs, pictures, images, or maybe you can bring in objects, right? If it's appropriate for your speech and demonstrate that object for us, or you can have like a model that you can sh show and show how it works, okay? Next thing I want you to remember is to ensure that your presentational aid um, is academically appropriate for your audience and that it has good layout, which means I don't want you to put everything on one slide. Okay, just put what you need. And I have a great video for you to watch about presentational aids and how to construct PowerPoint specifically. Now, I wanted to share with you some specific speech requirements, which includes this speech is five to seven minutes long. All right, make sure to stay within the time frame, 
because last speech, a few folks went over time and that does impact your grade. And if you're in a professional situation, it would also impact your credibility if you're only supposed to talk for 15 minutes and took up 45 minutes of the audience's time, right? Same rules apply here. Make sure to deliver extemporaneously, which means I don't want you to read from your outline. You can definitely use note cards, but remember on note cards, you just want to highlight the main points of your speech. Practice your speech enough that you know what you are talking about, okay? And then all you need to use the note cards for is just to glance and help remember your points. If you don't say it word for word, like in the outline, is not a big deal. That's what extemporaneous speaking is. Finally, you have a few other things such as your outline. Make sure that you have a full sentence outline and it's an APA format. Next, remember that this speech will be recorded in groups and I have assigned groups to you and you should be contacting your group right now and organizing when you're going to meet, who's going to record, and who's going to turn in the Zoom link. Remember that these are all individual speeches and will be great individually, but I want you to have a new audience who will watch you and give you some feedback, okay? So please make sure to remember that. And finally, the last thing I want you to remember is that you have to practice your speech in the lab and get your lab forms checked off. This is critical because you want to practice before you actually present your speech. Remember, there's no lab makeup. Go to the lab early. Last time there was a lot of issues because the lab is booked because most speeches happen all at the same time, not just your class, but the other 20 other public speaking classes are trying to you know, present their speeches in the lab too. So that's what I wanted you to know about informative speaking. You kind of know about organization, you know the requirements, and that it needs to be recorded in your groups that you've been assigned. Make sure to practice in the lab and come visit me during office hours. I know it doesn't work for everybody, so I'm going to try to figure out what I can do to adapt to your schedule if you have any questions and always make sure that you can reach out to my TA. So I look forward to observing your speech again and good luck.